welcome again guys in this video lecture we'll be talking about in situ hybridization now believe it or not in situ hybridization is one of the easiest molecular biology techniques that we can use based on a very simple principle that is the complementary nature of dna or rna what we know about dna is that dna have a complementary nature between the strands sorry okay so it looks something like this so let's say these are the two different strands of the dna and they are complementary with each other 5 prime to 3 prime 3 prime to 5 prime so the complementary nature of dna strands is telling us that adenine pairs with thymine with two hydrogen bonds and guanine pairs with cytosine with three hydrogen bonds so once we know this this is the complementary nature and we use this complementary nature complementary nature of the nucleic acids with one another as a hybridization assay to find out specific gene sequences inside the cell to find out specific mRNA sequences inside the cell now remember it is used in both the cases to find gene sequences as well as RNA sequences mostly are mRNA sequences because the thing is if we want to find a gene let's say we have a whole genome sequence inside the cell we don't know that where exactly the gene is present inside the cell in which chromosome it is present and where exactly it's present in that case we can fish out the choice of the gene using the complementary DNA strand of that gene let's say we know that the gene that we want to figure out is let's say it's very small arbitrary value like this so we know this is the gene that we want to follow this is the sequence of the gene so what we do in lab is we produce a complementary synthetic element of the dna made with t c g a g c this this sequence that we produce on our uh, as a as a bait right as a probe which is also called as a probe or as a bait and let's say this is our fish we want to catch that fish with the bait so this is the bait or our probe once we design this this probe is modified slightly because the nucleic acid sequence uh, will be the complementary one uh, with the desired sequence that we want to tag now what what kind of modifications we do we simply do it either fluorescent dye or or radio labeling or add any radio labeled or radio isotope there that's the modification that we you usually do so once we do this modification to this synthetic probe that we have now what we do we take this probe as a bait and we place this bait into the mixture of the cell so we have that cell we fix that cell we fix all the chromosome contents there then we take this modified probe now the remember in genome of the organism this is the section of gene that we want to find now remember inside the genome this strand is not single it is double stranded dna right so it is also having its complementary dna present in the genome so the idea here is that we first need to denature i mean separate both the strands of the dna first so we do that for the cell from where we need to pick up the uh, gene so we separate the strands now what we ensure that this section in that slide in that fixed content of slide is now free single stranded then we add this modified probe which is tagged with radio labeled isotope or fluorescent dye whatever according to our convenience and then what it we allow we allow them to to be hybridized properly so once they hybridize properly what we can tell after that let's say this is the slide or whatever in there there are different genes out there and among them this is the section of gene that we want now then we add this modified probe modified probe will not bind with any of these gene segments it will only bind to its complementary sequence right so it will bind to the complementary sequence where it is designed to bind with and this modified sequence also have let's say the fluorescent dye attached to it have the fluorescent dye attached so then when we when the binding is complete then we wash off the extra reagents from there and then we can detect the presence of that fluorescence 
coming from the location of the genome. Now what we can see, if we only see or visualize by looking at the fluorescent tag, we will see a fluorescence coming out from this region, None, nothing else, only the fluorescence coming from these sections and we know what, what gene is actually present in this region, right. So by looking at this, we can tell the presence of the desired gene, whether the desired gene is present in that cell or not. We can do this for in vivo assays or in vitro conditions to find out our desired segment. But this is not only the way to find out the presence of a gene. We have other ways to find out or figure it out, right? So nowadays what we do, instead of finding out the gene or the DNA segment, we use this technique a lot to find out the mRNA segment. The principle becomes uh, remains the same, except for this instead of T, it will be uracil. Except for that, the mRNA sequence remains the same. But the difference here in case of depicting the mRNA, it is more important and more appropriate. Why? Because let us say if we can detect the presence of a particular mRNA sequence that codes for a particular protein, we can tell how many mRNAs for coding that protein present at a given time in a cell. And, and if we compare it in different time gaps, it is going to tell us the expression pattern of a cell. And this expression pattern can help us to build up microarray technology. It can help us to understand the cell without microarray technology also. Right? So previous and microarray technology, we can use all these things to find out the number of mRNAs expressed for a particular given protein at a given time in different time intervals. That is the huge application of in situ hybridization for the mRNA detection. But remember the mRNA content varies from time to time. So if we want to measure this mRNA com content at a particular given time, we need to freeze those mRNAs at their place. We need to freeze them. To freeze mRNA content at a given time at a particular phase in cell, what we need to do, we need to add some cross-linking agent. And those cross-linking agents, we need to cross-link all those mRNAs one of, or together with the cells properly. And this cross-linking agent is formaldehyde. So we add formaldehyde which will cross-link it properly and then we use the same technique to visualize the presence of this mRNA and then we can detect the amount of proteins can be expressed at a given time and we can also compare it with the sequential amount of time to maintain the pattern of gene expression for a particular cell, right. So that is a blessing for us but it is a very simple technique but you can use it for these huge applications, right. So that is what in situ hybridization is guys. So if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more videos like this and share this video a lot with social networks. Thank you.